We're also going to do one other thing with it. And the other thing, actually a lot of fun, I think. This is where you're going to print out your sketch, and you are going to find two happy volunteers. And what are you going to do? You are going to show them your sketch, and you are going to ask them to actually try to place an order using your sketch. You can either print it out. Most people will print it out. Or some people who have tablets that are large enough, they actually have them try doing it on the tablet. If you don't want to kill any more trees. Either is fine, but here's the very important part. I think I mentioned this last time. Don't just have them look at it. They actually need to try to place an order. They use their finger as the cursor. Now, why am I having you do this? It sounds really silly, right? Do you think they do anything like this in industry? You're like, this must be a trick question. You're right, it is. They actually do. This is something that's called paper prototyping. It is very, very common in industry. Why? Because it's quick, it's easy, and it's cheap. And when you are initially designing something, and you may have a lot of changes, or you may have a lot of potential designs, that's what you want. Quick, easy, and cheap to help narrow things down. Now. I'm going to show you a quick video on paper prototyping. One of the things I do want to tell you is when you see this, don't get scared. The paper prototyping that they use in the video is significantly more complicated than what you need to do. All I want you to do is have a flat piece of paper. You don't have to do all of the drop downs and the new windows and all those things that you're about to see. Unless you want to. I won't stop you. Did you guys see that? You want me to rewind? There's your drop down. I know, isn't this the best computer you've ever seen? And do you see them scrolling? Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I think so. I actually have never tried to analyze what they're doing. <laughs> okay, have you guys seen enough? Yes. Now, if you'd like, feel free to make little drop down pieces of paper that you use, and things like that. But you don't have to. Now, this is also why having everything on one screen is going to make it easier for your paper prototype. So it makes you think I'm being nice, right? Yes. You were being think. All right, so that is an actual example more of what they do in industry. Now, you noticed it's not particularly neat, right? This is not a great artist. You don't have to be a great artist. However, to alleviate some of your worries, you get to create it in iPlots. Now, paper prototyping, as I said, is very, very commonly used. Right? And 
usually when people first hear about it, they're like, oh, that's just ridiculous. That's just silly. But think about how quickly you can sketch something as opposed to even just creating a prototype. How much faster do you think it is? Significantly faster. So this is something that you should be familiar with. How many of you have written pseudocode for a problem you're trying to solve for your programming class? Most of you. It's actually very similar. You can think of it as writing out pseudocode first and testing it out mentally. It's just a little more complicated because it's an interface in terms of drawing it out. All right. Any questions about that step so far? All right. Now, when you show this to your users, oops, let me scroll back up. Oh, if you want to know more about paper prototyping, here are two great websites. You are not required to read about them, but sometimes people like to do that. All right, so you are going to take your paper prototype. You are going to have your users actually use it. And yes, I do read the feedback carefully. I can tell the difference between I looked at it and I, you made them actually use it. Yes? Are they going to use it if you don't have um, the combo boxes or, or a new window? In that, well, in that case, what you can do is you can tell them what is in the dropdown. So for this application, OK, let's say, let's say you use a dropdown for size. I'm not saying that's the right way of doing it, but just let's say that you use the dropdown for size. In that case, you just tell them these are the sizes. So they can click, you know, they can you have them, you know, click the uh, drop down, tell them what size, have them click whatever size, doesn't actually matter. Um, and usually it works fine. The difference between the feedback you get from looking at it versus having someone use it is actually pretty substantial. In general, you're going to get a lot more detailed information doing actual paper prototyping. Having them actually try to use it then just look at it. If you have someone who's just looking at it, they're not thinking about what it's like to be a user. They're looking at how aesthetically pleasing is it. Does this make sense? Yeah, kind of in this big overall picture it makes sense. Having them go through things step by step gives them a very different perspective. You need to take those notes. You will put those notes from your users in your Word document. I want to know what they say. Then your next step is in your Word document, this here, using their feedback. I want you to make changes to your design. You must explicitly state in your Word document what changes you are making based on their feedback. Now, if it just so happens that they give you feedback where you're not able to make it, that change, just write that down in your Word document. So they may tell you, I really would prefer this to be on multiple screens. Well, then you just say, this is what they said. This is the feedback they provided. I'm not making that change because you already told me that is not part of the requirements and you'll take points off. Make sense? Make sure that you include all of these pieces of information. Students tend to lose the most points on this assignment because they don't provide the information requested. So if you don't tell me what changes you made based on the feedback, how many points can I give you for that? Am I a mind reader? Am I psychic? Have I won the lottery because I'm psychic? No. So you have to be explicit. If it's not in the document, I can't give you points for it. 